So I'll go ahead and call the special call meeting of the Harper City Council on December the 13th, 2019 to order at 1 o'clock and we'll open with a word of prayer. Father, today especially we thank you that we are so blessed, Father, that uh, we can govern ourselves, uh, that we live in such a free country and we just ask for your guidance, Father, as we seek to serve the people of Hartford that decisions that are made that would be beneficial to as many as possible and Father we just ask for uh, your continued watch power over us that we might uh, be able to serve you pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Alright we don't have any visitors that Visitors, so we'll take a look at the minutes from the previous meetings. Uh, yeah, I've already done that. All right, it's one o'clock, so I call this <laughs> special <laughs> call business uh, council meeting of the Hartford City Council to order at one o'clock on December the 13th, 2019. We've already had a prayer, <laughs> so let's look at the minutes. <laughs> I'll make a motion to set the minutes. All right. I'll second. Second. Is there any discussion about any of the minutes? Not then. All in favor? Signify by lift your hand. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Uh, we'll have the comments from our city attorney at this time. If you have anything for us, nothing for open record other than on a personal note. I think everybody's aware of my uninvited guest. So yeah. the other night, but uh, I'll just for the record, I'd like to say that uh, Robbie Shockley has followed up, and I've been very appreciative of his efforts. And he called me again last night to kind of make sure everything was still good. So I, I appreciate that with the police department. Okay, good. All right, let's go ahead to the financials then. If uh, look at the uh, bank balances, the. Income and accounts payable report. Let's see if you have any questions about anything. Air yard sale permits five dollars. Five dollars. Didn't even know you had to have one. No, uh, like most people don't. Oh, and we that's don't. why that stuck out there. Now, I think usually if they're not not very frequent. We hardly say much about it, you know. Yeah. They're pretty frequent. We'll ask them for. Yeah. It's kind of hard to catch them all. Yeah. <laughs> On yeah. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you go looking for them. Anybody have any questions or comments about any uh, any of the report? I'll make a motion to accept financial reports. Motion's made or second. second. Either one of them. They both had their hands up. Any more discussion? All in favor of accepting the financials? Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. All right, we'll enter into old business. First time old business is the community coordinator. We've had uh, two applicants. Both of them were exceptionally good in their in their own respect um, it's a tough decision to make and so uh, after consulting with the economic development committee members uh, I decided to recommend Ashley Smith for the community coordinator position to bring her to you for acceptance is there a motion to accept her as the community coordinator I'll make a motion to accept her. All right, second. All right, now discussion. Any discussion regarding that? I'll just note, Mayor, I think it was originally advertised as a contract. Yeah, a it's position, right. I don't so mean to, it's not employee. We're not hiring or some right, employee. Right. But I think we'll probably just have to 
I finalize the details in the final document. <laughs> okay. Um, can we put in there that we'll begin her contract after the first of the year on January 2nd? Okay. Would that be acceptable to everybody to yeah. the motion and yeah, the second? Yeah. All right. Any more discussion? By contract? Yeah. Contract. Okay, if not, then if you're in favor of that, uplifted hand. Thank you. If you're not, all right, motion's carried. Uh, second item of business is a code enforcement officer. We've had uh, two applicants for that. Again, I don't know, sometimes we get applicants for jobs that, you know, I don't know where the people come from. They're fine. But this time for a code enforcement officer, I had two exceptionally good applicants it's a tough decision uh, but I'm going to recommend that we go ahead and hire Jeff Renfro as the uh, code enforcement officer and uh, he'll begin uh, after the first of the year as well I'll make a motion we hire Jeff okay. I'll second that All right. any discussion to this I've already explained a lot uh, uh, we'll let the other applicant know, and um, uh, like keep this applicant application handy in case something doesn't work out for Jeff. You know that. All right. Uh, any other discussion about it? Okay. If you're in favor of hiring Jeff, uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion carried. Uh, next, we have the fire truck tanker. Um, I know that at the last meeting you asked me to get some bids. Um, <clears throat> I didn't get bids. What I, what I did was declare a state of emergency for the city of Hartford. That way we can all have to take bids. And the reason I, I said that and did that was because we found a truck that met their needs at an exceptionally good price. And I'm not sure that after looking at other websites that we could even come close to what we have have come up with right now. Uh, everything else would have been older or uh, smaller or uh, not as well taken care of and or costlier. So we ran into that. The reason I was able to declare a state of emergency, there's about a half dozen locations in Hartford where we have inadequate water supply for fighting a house fire. Uh, one area is right at the corner of Kenny's <laughs> house. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kenny. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, the height is just too small right there. Yeah. Uh, a pumper requires a six inch line and, and so we've got these four inch hydrants in various places or no hydrant at all. Uh, such places as uh, Parker Avenue, um, part of Church Street, um, Oakwood Drive at Fredica, um, the hospital, if in certain situations we would have problem coming up with enough water to fight a fire to the hospital. The same thing is true at Wayland. Depending upon where the fire right. is, we would have some problems there. So I've declared a state of emergency which allows us to go ahead and and uh, bypass the bidding process. And uh, what I'd like to do is we've talked some about the financing of it. Um, the High County Water District will meet the 23rd of this month. Their board will meet. But uh, Walt has proposed to to me uh, paying us back for the money we've been paying to Centertown for that line there, the moral obligation that we had to pay for that line. He's uh, They're going to pay us exactly what we've paid to Centertown, which is right now a little over $55,000. Um, that money has come out of occupational tax. So uh, what I'm proposing to you is that 
once we get that money, take an additional amount necessary to purchase the truck and transport it down here. Uh, transporting bill is going to be about $2,900, which is a lot cheaper than me sending two firemen up there, flying them up there, or using a rental car, and the trip on the road, and the truck is really not made for, you know, for the highway traffic, uh, interstate traffic. The fuel coming back, I think we'd be much better off just to pay somebody to haul it down here for us for $2,900. So that plus the purchase price to take that money and the 55000 plus that we're going to get back for the Centertown pipe plus the money that's been um, hinted at, I'll put it like that, from the fiscal court. There, and put that money into the back into the occupational tax once that money comes in, and then take the money out of the occupational tax to pay for the truck and the hauling. The truck balance is eighty thousand one hundred dollars. The hauling is two thousand nine hundred dollars, so that's eighty three thousand dollars. Fifty five of it coming from the center town, and then the remainder. Wouldn't some of it come in from the fire department? Pardon? Wouldn't some of the money come in from the we fire department? We could take it out. Of, we could take it out of there, but if we took it out of the fire department, then whenever the fire department account got low, we just have to transfer money into it anyway. So it would be just. I mean, it would come out of occupational tax to go into the. There's only about thirty thousand left in the fire department fund account. To to go through the rest mm -hmm. of the year for their maintenance, for testing, for uh, supplies that they, they're they scheduled to get. And so that would be depleted and we'd have to end up transferring money. We we'll always transfer money into the fire department fund anyway. Hmm. Yeah, and last I year. I thought there was $40,000 that was going to come from them. 30. There's 30. 30? It's noted 30. in the minutes here. Okay. Last, yeah. In our meeting last month, it was thirty thousand to come from the fire department, mm -hmm. and then yeah, the remaining to come from occupational yeah. tax fund. Right. Well, if we just go ahead and take it all out of occupational tax, we're looking at coming up with approximately ninety-five thousand dollars between the center town and the fiscal court. The center town funding will go back into the occupational tax fund. Yeah, right? it go back into occupational tax where it came from. We would eventually be reimbursed. Well, I don't say reimbursed. Would you use the money from the center town? The fifty-five thousand to help pay for part of the truck and the hauling, and then the money that would. I don't want to call session about something. There. There's somebody at that money that's not right. Because the fire department agreed to that. They were here, weren't they? Last time. center town and the fiscal court will have more than enough money to pay for the truck and hauling and have money still left to put back into the occupational tax fund. So the, I guess the question, the motion that we made last month, is that not sufficient enough to take care of the business? Well, if we take the money out of the fire department, we're just going to turn right around and transfer money back into it. Okay. Because if you're, you're talking about Basically, taking out the whole thirty thousand out of the yeah. So then, it's would, their if, if that's what they need, but we just make the motion then to move thirty thousand from one account into the other. Well, we'll, we'll transfer. I mean, we, we can do that. Take the money out of the fire department. We'll, 
next month we'll be transferring money back into the fire department out of the occupational tax. We always have to. The money we get coming in from mm -hmm. fire department revenues is insufficient to carry the fire department through a whole year. The fire department does not have enough money coming in to meet their expenses for a whole year. There is always funds transferred in primarily out of occupational tax to the fire department. Well, what caused the change? Did we not know this when we talked what about, about it last month? About well, I mean, it's just the thirty thousand. It's just a matter of do we take it all out of occupational tax, or do we take it out of occupational tax and the fire department, and then take out of occupational tax to feed the fire department once it runs out? You know, it's just six of one, half a dozen of the other. It looks to me like. Well, when we make a motion to do something. We can do it. I mean, that's no problem. Why, why does it change, or why do we go to trouble making the motion if we're not going to go back? I'm just trying to simplify the transfer of funds. We yeah, can take the money out of the fire department, take the money out of the, and take care of the truck. No problem at all. There's no problem whatsoever. You have the power to veto motions we make. Well, no, I don't choose to do that. <laughs> well, that's what you're doing. Well. We can do that. I'm just trying to simplify the process and say... Yeah, you can't say I'm simplifying it because it's a better deal for what you think, but it may not be a better deal for what we think. Okay, so you take the money out of the fire department, and it goes down to $5,000, $10,000 is all you got left in there. All right, first part of February, we start transferring money into the fire department for the remainder of the year. See, I don't understand. What well, the that same problem was there when we made the motion, and you didn't mention that. That's fine. We'll, we'll just go ahead and stick with the, the center town money and the fire department and pay for the truck. I'm just recommending that we pay for the truck right now and go ahead and get that deal consummated and have the truck shipped down here. Money coming out of their town as soon as we get it, and the well, it won't be as soon as we get it because we won't get the money till after Christmas. So, I'm just saying right now, take it out of occupational tax, we'll replace it back once we get the center town money, and then take it out of the fire department, the remainder out of the fire department. So, we'll, we'll stay with our original. Motion from yeah, last month, that's fine. and you can that's fine. No conduct problem business. And but in, I, I I get that there's we most likely will have to refund. We'll have to move money into the fire department yep. in the months that's to come. First so. February probably. Okay. How long do they hold? Will they hold the truck? Well, we've asked them to hold it now for over a month. I mean, I don't, I don't know. As, as far as I'm concerned, he said they'll take it, they'll hold it as long. But remember, we've got certain areas of Hartford that are. So, so if I'm if just correct me if I'm wrong though. So the funding was approved yeah. last month. You've declared a state of emergency, which means we can forego the bid process. Right. So then we should purchase the truck. Right. So that can happen. And now the 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 new business is going to be, I guess, the funding in the fire department will will need will need to move money in. We we'll just have to wait to offset we, that thirty we'll thousand. Wait till we run out there to. Come back with a request to move funds from transfer funds. How much money does the fire department have as of right 50, now? 55000 right now, right? The bank balance, mm -hmm. roughly. So it's going to uh, take I them down to 25000 to operate. Have uh, they got that much in there? No, no. Okay. So, um, so that would be twenty five. Is there any concern that that yeah. twenty five will be an issue in the next month or two? Their expenses don't seem to be that. Their, okay. their uh, big payment of thirty three thousand is in May is due May first. Okay. So. But they will have no more revenue unless the few uh, people that that trickle in their dues and then their quarterly um, fire association. Okay. May. So by. January, February, we should be able to make a decision, move the funding in that needs to happen. When will you, 
Do I now? As far as actually paying for the truck? If we wrote a check right now, mm -hmm. we'd have to take money out of occupational tax mm -hmm. to be replaced by yep. Centertown money later on. Yeah. And we'd take the rest of the money out of the fire department, mm -hmm. and that would pay for the truck and the transport fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we agreed now, to last month. Yeah. Chance of losing the truck. Yeah. Well, if you were selling a truck and they paid a deposit, wouldn't you want them to go ahead and yeah, get your... Yeah, make some out of day to finish paying it off. I, I mean, I'm... They made a great to us. So. They said that they'd keep the truck. But now I'm, I'm saying if I declare that this, we have an emergency... There's areas of the town right yeah, now no, that are, you know, that are yeah. not sufficiently covered. Mm -hmm. So my concern is getting the truck down here to cover that more than having a new tr or another truck in 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 a bay down there. You know, they, they would probably them. they probably keep the truck till that first year or longer. You no, well, that's not the question. I don't think I'd really have the truck down here to yeah. take care of the situation with the emergency. Yeah. I, where I was at last month was the only, it was, a, it was a formality of going to bid. And now that we have the state of emergency, I don't see any reason to hold it up. And I think we've agreed on where the funding should come from. Okay. And uh, we just need to keep an eye on the fire department account right. because it may be, it may start to fall too short before the dues are or their, their bills are, are due, so. Well, it, it will. It will, so, yeah, which is fair. right now for it. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So we just, I just want a, a yep. more of an informational thing than a. Yeah. I need a motion to refer me money out of occupational tax for that. Didn't you do that last month? Hmm. Yeah, last month we did. It was thirty thousand out of the okay. fire department and okay. the balance out of yep. occupational tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Moving right along uh, to the chippers. The next thing that we want to consider. Uh, you want to know about rental and contracting to rent one. It cost uh, four hundred twenty-five dollars a day. That means we gotta go e town and get it, bring it back down here, and take it back the same day. Uh, for a week, it's twelve hundred twenty-five dollars. For four weeks, okay. For one day, it's four twenty-five. For a week, it's twelve twenty-five. And for four weeks, it's forty-two eighty-five. Uh, if we contracted, now, uh, I had Tony's nephew come in. He would charge us for a truck, the chipper, and two men. He would charge us 140 an hour. Um, I said, well, what if we supply our own men? Well, of course, he'd want one of his men to be with the chipper, so we'd only have to supply one of the men, probably. He would reduce it. He didn't say how much he would reduce it. He didn't hadn't figured that out. Um, I found out that Woodchuck would provide a chipper and a truck for $75 an hour. With labor? That's with our our labor. What's the cost to buy one? Or to what now? What's the cost to either fix what you have or buy a new one? To, uh, well, to buy one would be in the low 20,000s, 22,000, 23,000, something like that. To replace, to rebuild the engine, and we'd have our chipper available at our, anytime we needed it, right. with our men, uh, cost $9,500. And we're already into them fifteen hundred dollars for diagnosis, mm -hmm. tearing it down, and diagnosing what the problem is, how much how extensive it is. So basically, you're talking about another eight thousand dollars is what the 
new engine would cost us. And our chipper has got a new motor on it. Too. Yeah. Yeah, it have a have a rebuilt motor. That's still how often do they use it? It just depends. Right now there's probably I asked Jason the other day, he wasn't able to say how many hours of chipping we had to do. There's some small jobs, uh, some bigger jobs. Um, probably less than one day's worth of work, two days. But if we had a, another ice storm, something like that, a windstorm, took a lot of trees, limbs out, um, you know, we'd have a week's worth of work, mm -hmm. whatever. I would, and y'all got the member too. We, I think, I'm not talking out of turn, that y'all do charge, what, $25 when you pick up? Yeah. So that comes out too, $25, and then you got 75 an hour, and then you got 140 an hour. So with our chipper, they can go around any time and pick up. But you can get a whole week for 1200 bucks. Yeah. Uh, $12.25. And you may not use that chipper the yeah. whole week. <laughs> yeah, I would consider. I think the the rental maybe is a better option based off of the amount of time we don't use it. Because when those things sit, that's, yeah. that's the biggest problem is right. they're not being used. And if if the city had more use for it than you know one week, and then I think the emergencies that when they happen they happen and you'll have to evaluate do we even have the manpower to clean it up or do we contract out to have somebody help us clean up i do remember in the last ice storm that we got some fema money to contract out for that cleanup mm -hmm. uh, yeah we uh just looked that up the other day if you remember george it was eighteen thousand dollars to bamco because at that time that's mm -hmm. what they had to borrow Y'all remember a little wind storm we had a month ago? Mm -hmm. Come through, I was doing a wig. The lights went out. The tree fell out at the, <laughs> out at the uh, old National Guard armor out there. They, I was doing that wedding out there. And when I got back in town, me and my grandson, we couldn't get across the road. And Jason was on the back hole. Because his other guys was out of town and he was out there. And I told him, I said, if I didn't have my grandson, I'd jump in here and hip you get these limbs. So I ran out there and hipped and pulled limbs out of the middle of the road so the people could go around. And he had cars back there. But that chipper, same the next morning after we got it off, they got that chipper right out and went and cleaned up. <clears throat> so, see, so I work with them, so I know, you know what we need what we don't need <laughs> yeah I just run some quick numbers so a twenty thousand dollar expense if you got a week's worth of work you got 15 weeks worth of work that like so now that's like 15 years before you get the twenty thousand dollars versus the rental oh you're talking about buying a new one or yeah if you bought a new, a new one when it's really a 20 20, 22, 23 would be a used, good used one. Yeah, but you're talking about if you only rent one week a year. That return on investments. Yeah, paper. you got 15 years before you even hit $20,000. The yeah. equipment will be obsolete by then anyways. But what about uh, $8,000 for a new rebuilt engine on our chipper? Because you see, if we don't fix that engine, then we're, we're sitting on a piece of metal that we can maybe sell to the junkyard or something like that you know but it becomes surplus property mm -hmm. I, i'll be yeah. honest with you that if we went with the 95 that's the 1500 dollars we already owe we already got into it and the 80 some dollars 88 dollars or whatever eight thousand eight thousand we come up better with our chipper and we would have it. I mean, that, he's already in it. He knows what's wrong with it, putting it back together. I mean, and we know what kind of motor we got on that chipper. We know what it'll do and everything. Because some of these limbs, I mean, they ain't little limbs. 
you get down in the ditch and you got a limb like this or a log and you put it in there, that chip works it up. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the only other thing that kind of weighs on me is we went through this last year where we didn't have all the help that they needed to run the city and, you know, we were people were complaining about, hey, this didn't get done, that didn't get done. So it's not like we have the extra people to deal with it anyways. Like if we're going to go out and chip limbs, well, that's other work they can't get done. And Mondays so, and Tuesdays are about the only day because the rest of the time you got uh, garbage pickup Wednesday exactly. and Friday, part of the day Friday. But Mondays and Tuesdays for full maintenance crew of five people, mm-hmm. uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is Jason and, and uh, Mike. Mike. Mike, you know, there's only what you got available there. So. Yeah. I, I just know. think when I, for me it, it seems like that when the need's there, we we would rent what we needed or or hire it out, and yeah, there's a little more expense up front, but it's it's going to be more it's going to be less expensive than purchasing what we need and or hiring more labor and or you know mm-hmm. those other. Yeah, can hire more labor. That's for sure. Ex- exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, make a motion and we couldn't hardly rent it for one day because you're gonna spend three or four hours yeah. going and getting it taken it back. Yeah. Okay, you rent it for the whole week. Yeah, is it most economical? Yeah. Well you might rent it for three days, you know, go and get it one day and yeah. three days later take it back, but then you paid Twelve hundred seventy-five dollars when you have the whole week for twelve twenty-five. So it would make know. sense to just get it for the whole week when it when the need's there. So whatever you whatever you want to do, uh, if you if you don't fix the engine, though, we've got that the rest of the chipper we got to do something with. We can declare surplus property, but I don't think we'll ever get anything for it. Mm-hmm. Without an engine on it, you still have the old engine. That's what we're talking about. It's the one that's. Well, I know, but if it's already out, they give you more for it with her. Yeah, he's already got fifteen no, hundred dollars get, tied up in it. You'd have to yeah. buy another engine and put it in there. Yeah. I make motion rebuild that engine. I do too. <laughs> okay, there's a motion in the second. Uh, all right, let's discuss. Right. It, it's to, and what's your motion? Rebuild the engine. Rebuild the engine. Broke down. This is for the, this is the $8,000 to rebuild it? You're, you're, we're all ran to them for 1500 yeah. so it's just an additional 8000 to rebuild, uh, put it back together again. And then you got new parts and everything. Well, it should be included, be is it not? The what now? Parts should be included in that. Oh, no, that's what he's saying. It's eight thousand oh, okay. is, uh, is how everything. Long, how long have you had this chipper? How long have I had the chipper? <laughs> it's been a long time. How much money have you put in it before for maintenance? A lot. So you're putting in a lot of maintenance work. Um. Uh, got a new motor. We do know that, and yeah. I think it came in two years ago. I don't two think years ago, you got a new motor and you're already replaced? Well, the, the, I don't know if it's been two years or three. I'm not so you're already $20,000 into this thing? Mm. If, you, if you put rebuild the current? I don't know. Yeah, at least these pieces of equipment are designed to be run 24-7 to get the value out of them. Yeah. If we're only using them once a week or a week out of a year. Let me talk to, well, hurt in our talk to Jason yeah. and let's see. No. Not to mention, if we don't have the labor to go out and operate the thing, yeah, yeah. it's just going to sit. Limbs don't get picked up. <clears throat> yeah. And people fuss. Yes, sir. We got some questions here in the council meeting about the chipper. Can we try my prayer? Uh, how long have we had the chipper? Uh, 98. It's been here since I've been 
here. Okay. Uh, what kind of expenses have we incurred with the chipper up to this point? Have we had to replace the motor before? Yes. Okay. It was cheaper to replace the motor last time it was to buy a new one. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, In 2013, we put that motor on. Okay. Um, we've got the prospect of renting one for $1,225 a week. How much, how often do we need a chipper? That just depends on our quarters and storms. I mean, when it's, so if we get hit, it comes in its handy pocket on shirt. So it's kind of hard to, I mean, it, it pays for itself time and time again. Okay. Um, what well, if we rent one for a week? Uh, would that take care of most of the emergencies that we'd run into? Yeah, it just depends. I mean, on workload. You know, what if we have down trees and all that? It's just that when we're going to do our work orders, you know, if we're going to charge somebody to pick up limbs, you know, if they pay us $25 and we got to go rent a $1,200 a week a chipper, you know, we've got to retake that. Okay. Questions, anybody? Does he not haul them off somewhere else? Can you not haul the limbs off to somewhere else? Oh, yeah, you're going to have animals. I tried to have them loaded on a trailer or by, you know, dump truck and then haul it down until it goes piled up and then burn it at a later date. You'll have extra trips, too, probably. <laughs> It's going to take man hours. Question. Or with a chipper, we pull up the chip and a big pile turns into a little pile after it's chipped. Mm -hmm. This $8,000, is it covering only the motor part? Or is it covering a full inspection of every piece and part of this? That's to just see? to replace the engine, that's all it is. Yeah, the engine, everything else is mine, you know, it's up to fire as far as I know. Without an engine, it's, it's useless. Yeah. I don't want it to be like the dump truck and the tie rod break or something, you know. <laughs> I mean, as far as, you know, something tearing up on it, I can't say that it won't. You know, it's just an act of the beast, you know, moving parts. But it was running good until, you know, it messed up that day. Mm -hmm. So it was chipping with it when it quit. Okay. It's one of them it's hard to justify if we're going to need it, we might not need it for a while. But, you know, if we get hit with a big storm, and then, I don't know, it might be a question for Lisa, is if we get the claim out on FEMA, if we have a FEMA claim. I don't know if we do or not with the chipper, but they pay so much for it. What happens if... Uh if we decide to rent and don't replace that engine, is there a market for the chipper without the engine? That I have no idea. I'd say there's probably a part market, but you're probably not going to get all the nothing out of it. You know, we still owe this guy for diagnosing it. Right. Yeah, I know that he's already told me $1,500 for doing that. Yeah. Okay. Jason, who's the vendor for that? Our chipper? Uh-huh. Vermeer. Vermeer? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. I think, I want to think they bought it in 98. It was here when I got here in 2000. So, so who's the vendor would be doing the repair? It is Jones Diesel. The, they do not work on motors. That's what we done last time. We had to take it to a Perkins dealer in Indiana because Vermeer does not work on the engines. And they work on everything else but the engines. So in 2013, they're the one that did it? Mm -mm. It was a company in Indiana. Yes, okay. but the warranty's long gone by now. Yeah. So this is a new guy? Yeah, this is a new guy. It's local. But everybody recommends it. He works on parking engines all the time for, uh, I think, Century Aluminum or somebody. He know, I reckon he's pretty good. He knows his stuff. Is he offering any kind of warranty on this new motor? It should. I'm a saint and have to have a warranty. I wouldn't want to pay that much money if it didn't have a warranty. I wouldn't buy it out of my own pocket for one if it didn't have a warranty. What should it, how long should that warranty be? I'd say it's probably going to be so many hours or so many years or months. I'm not for sure. That's a big question. George has to call and ask me. 
But they should have a warranty because that's putting that much money into it. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't, if it didn't have a warranty and it wasn't worth nothing, then I wouldn't go that round. Because we'd just be throwing back, you know, good money after bad. If we went that round. <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. Have a Merry Christmas. You do. I'm going back up. You don't even want to know what I do when you call. I'm All right. I'm playing the toilet. I ain't going to lie. Well, we're down here cleaning and we're going back up. All right. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Uh, more discussion. <laughs> I mean, I kind of know where my head's at, so All right. we just need to vote and move on. I worry about that warranty. Uh, uh, I would think, not, surely he if it was one. If it was um, in constant use, I'd say the warranty would be for a year or two, probably something like that. Uh, since it's not a constant use machine, it'd probably be, like he said, for so many hours, you know, but a year's worth of hours or whatever. Mm. Something like that, probably my guess. We're discussing, any more discussion? Okay, we've got a motion to uh, finish repairing the engine and keeping our chipper uh, been seconded. If you're in favor of that, I'll lift your hand. Okay. All right. All opposed? All right. I, I say three to two, so uh, motion's carried. Um, one of those situations where I'm not sure there is a best answer. I don't know, but okay. Um, that's all we have on the old business. Under new business, uh, street lights recommendation from the EDC. So I'll let you talk about that. <laughs> Are you me to? Um, <laughs> Mary Bell, help me out. I think. What? The EDC at the meeting, they uh, about want street to lights, additional street lights. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Person yes. to go on up the block, is that right? Yes, to go lights. up to Walnut Street up here. Our, this yeah, side of the yeah. the surface station or the discussion Valero. was we don't want to get into a situation where we can't expand and they not offer that light anymore. So right. the EDC thought it'd be prudent to go ahead and purchase them since the funds are there, as well as purchase some flags for the poles for the various seasons. Um, and we understand that there might be some electrical issues and some sidewalk work that would have to be done first, but at least the material would be here. Um, and George has the numbers. Do you know I've talked to the engineer. Um, he'll have to come over and determine how many lights we're looking at that we can feasibly put in there. Uh, we won't be the first light won't have a place up until you get to the drive beside Tara's office. That's the first place you'll be able to put a light in, and from there on up to the parking lot for the fast way, you might get two more lights in there. I think is probably all you'll be able to get in, which means you'll have to saw cut the concrete to extend the power line on up. But their recommendation is to go ahead and purchase the exact number of lights that we would need, plus a couple extra bulbs, uh, store them down at the maintenance garage, uh, and just doing that just in case styles change over a year or two until we get ready to do it again. So we go ahead and get the ones that match what we've got now, and then... Uh, purchase uh, a set of flags or banners, uh, seasonal banners. Uh, they can be expensive. We found uh, one place that's pretty cheap. But, uh, I'm not cheap, but we found a place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're pointing at me like that. She's got a bad uh, I'll vouch for the fact <laughs> she's not cheap, okay? It wasn't a motion made. We don't have to vote on it. <laughs> 
squishy teeth. No. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they'd like to go ahead and do that now with the money to come out of the EDC account uh, to take. And really, we're we we're looking to. at maybe somewhere in the fifteen to twenty thousand dollars range is what yeah. we're we're thinking that's going to cost us. So, what, there, huh? what about the lights that are down there now? That was to yes, that was to take some of the uh, funds and also to pay the city for the uh, wiring work and the reimbursement yeah. of the purchase of the Re reimburse the yeah. city for the lights and the wiring right. work that's been done already. That was. Be nice if we could put them all at over there. This will be somewhere in the thirty-two, thirty-three thousand dollar range. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was it's a hefty recommendation, but there are some funds there, and, and the EDC felt like this goes directly. I mean, everyone's talking about how good it looks, and the city's it, it's making a step in the right direction. So we're just gonna go up to the gas station, right? Yeah. Right here. Can't go past the. Right, right. Into the parking lot, no. somebody be taking that thing out, I like know. we took out the pole <laughs> right. at the right. food pantry. Okay. We can't go on the other side of the street because you have all the other utilities. And yeah. The <coughs> but it looks good yeah. on that one. But it looks like about three more lights is going to fit in there. Okay. We may see a four will fit, but whatever it is, whatever the engineer recommends is what we would yeah, they got the hanging, where the flags hang down. Uh -huh. in there. There's two... Bars that stick out the back side, mm -hmm. and the banners slip over both of them. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. they don't flap in the breeze or anything right. like that. Okay. They're anchored mm -hmm. at both top and bottom. So you mean you get that job hanging the flags? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the original project budgeted for? It was budgeted for a little less than $30,000. Okay. Because that way we didn't have to take the bids. Yeah. That's what the original estimates were. So we said, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Well, when the final bill comes in, it ends up being over 30000 Authors are not going to like that. But the original bid was for less than 30000 it, it was in good faith. Uh, yeah. uh, it was in good faith, I think, on yeah. the city's behalf of that project. Yeah. And so we, we didn't feel like we were doing anything wrong by going ahead and accepting or setting it up with Rexel and with Royal to do the work and all. Mm -hmm. But when Royal first estimated $3,600, they came back like $4,100, you know. Yeah. And that kind of put us over. Though I would say, have you already paid so that, Mayor? I mean, I, if they gave you that quote and it would kept you under the bidding requirement, I would say they would probably be close to back. Well, it was just an estimate. It was all it was. I don't think they... So for the lot for the other three lights, it'd be around eleven thousand if they don't have any electrical problems. Yeah, but then you got the cost of putting in the, the actual wiring. Yeah, which the wiring itself was originally estimated at what? At four. Uh, four thousand one hundred. Well, now the construction okay. of the post and the wiring. Uh, pulling the wire through the conduit and everything. See, that was already in there. The new ones are going to have to have the conduit put in. It's going to have to be sawed. It's going to have, you know, we did it when they were pouring the sidewalk, made it much easier. This time it's going to require a little more labor and materials so will be about the same. So. so if you said half, if it was around two and it cost you 11, you're talking about around 13 just for the new lights. Yeah. Did the EDC uh, talk about putting them on the other side of the street any? We had asked about that, but I think from the engineer standpoint, the way that the other utility poles are there, and then also downtown where when the, I guess it was maybe the feds, I guess, when they redid 231, they did such a huge uh, effort yeah, to the you elevation. just saw a notch in that and run it? You wouldn't be able to get your you wouldn't be able to get your conduit and your electrical in there mm -hmm. economical mm -hmm. because it's all solid concrete all the way down. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way down; just down enough to bury the conduit and the electrical. Yeah. In the well, the problem you'd have is you have to get below the the concrete structure. And once we code. start.
digging into that and making any yeah. differences to that, you may have to also address some of those corners from an ADA perspective and everything else, which could really become an expense. Yeah. Hmm. So are we, we looking to just purchase then the lights and hardware now? Well, see, now the EDC cannot spend the money. The council has to okay yeah. the... Mm -hmm. the yeah. The EDC recommendation was to go ahead and take from the, e the economic development account and pay for the work that's been done downtown on the lights, mm -hmm. as well as go ahead and purchase enough lights to finish on up to Walnut. Okay. Because that was the original scope of work for the sidewalk ran originally was up through Walnut Street, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and while the lights are available, we don't want to miss out on getting matching lights, as well as the fact that we have these banner poles. Um, no, it, it would be nice to go ahead and get some yeah. flags on those, yeah. So that was the entire concept there. And then there'll be a piece of work of getting those installed in the future. Right. Which will be, there'll be another recommendation At, for that yes. in the future. Yes. But that yes. could be down the road because there's still going to be some electrical and engineering yeah. to be done. Yeah. Okay. And you got winter coming. Yeah. The main concern was whether they would so I entertain update a motion. those poles or not make. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept their recommendation. Yep. Second. Okay. More discussion. That's gonna be an interesting one to write. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor of that. I don't have the numbers in front of me, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't talk about the numbers, all right, according to that, uh that's all we've got, uh in the way of business that we can transpire. So anybody have anything informational, just uh wish everybody a Merry Christmas or anything like that. The parking lot there that we fixed downtown, it doesn't have any signs about how long you can park in that lot. Okay. I don't know that there was ever a, a limit set on it. I thought we had two hours on it. But we had two hours on along 231 in downtown, but I think we could probably, if you all want, we could go ahead and set up any parking lots on the Bible City at the same, if that's... If that's the issue, I know you're saying that you have some that are there days on end. Yeah. I think you've had concerns with. Is that also be about ordinance? I'm sorry? Is that to be about ordinance for out the parking lot? Uh, actually, we own that property, so I don't think we so. Can do yeah, it. We, can, okay. we can just go ahead and set that pole. Okay. There's one uh, red vehicle that's. It's within the parameters of the. Sits there, and he lives up over with Capers. And I didn't know if there's any provisions made to make him a parking spot or not. But he's sometimes that they're all night and all day, which at night there's no problem with. He doesn't move. Whatever counts. You have an existing ordinance that says that downtown parking um, between, I believe, is how it reads, and which would encompass that area uh, that is right there on the on that two thirty one stretch that you identified in your original ordinance. So I think it would probably. I'd have to look at, look at it directly, yeah. but I, I, I think you're probably good on that part there. Are we going to look up at the ordinance of Orangeboro? I mean, to do that we here can, in Hartford? Yeah, we can look up the ordinance that was passed in Orangeboro about their backyard uh, code enforcement. They have, they're contemplating, I don't think they've passed no, it yet. No, they're looking at it. Of, of, doing away with the restriction of what's vis only visible from natural passing or yeah, from the the street, street or something like that. To cover now, they said that they've got a lot of backyards that have privacy fences where people are storing junk cars or things under tarps or whatever, you know, to try to, and so they're concerned about cleaning up the backyards as much as and so I didn't know if our ordinance said anything about backyards. Ours isn't directly limited to what's visible. The problem you're probably going to have, though, is if it's not visible, how do you know? I mean, outside of a specific complaint, I think that's well. What that's what the to. ordinance should cover. They were talking about that 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 they would have to write that ordinance to allow the code enforcement people to be able to look. We can beyond the, uh, the powers our code enforcement officer. They already have that authority. The problem is. You don't typically have, I mean, Har Harper's not exactly having a full-time code enforcement officer like they have, like, I think, right. full-time over in Orangeboro. But 
the issue is like absent maybe a neighbor calling in a complaint, the code enforcement calling and investigating that. I think typically you just don't see. Um, well, I mean, you know, let's face it, people in Hartford don't even build the fence. They just park it, you know. <laughs> Which at that point it would be visible. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we went to all the trouble to tear down the Canary House up there next to where Leach's Grocery used to be, and now it looks like a used car lot. <laughs> I'm trying to think which one that is. It's Clay Street. On Clay Street, Street right across from those new apartments. Okay. Across from Walker Street. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, right now, I think the ordinance would allow you to go ahead and take care of, because it's any nuisance or any, any unsightly issues in Hartford. I think the practicality here is more mm -hmm. so than the enforcement problem. But... You've got a new code yeah. enforcement officer coming in. I mean, that might be something to kind of address with him is to to make a more <laughs> effort. To but do we have a code? What what does our code enforcement say now? It just, <laughs> just prohibits. You're not supposed it, to have junk. <coughs> yes, it prohibits junk. It prohibits junk vehicles. It prohibits trash and accumulation of rubbish. Anything that would attract vermin, which isn't limited to just the front facing of the sidewalk. And there have been other issues. I know. I know Nathan had several. Uh, citations and warnings that he issued for people with backyards and carports and things of that nature but typically because he couldn't see it when he was driving around town it was because a neighbor or somebody had called and complained yeah. and he would investigate yeah. it. We have two garages right now what? that are breeding grounds for you name it. Yeah. You know, grass, mice, snakes, spiders. Exactly. And our code does allow for that now to address that but again, it's just a matter of the code enforcement officer being aware. What's the fine on that? First thing is we give a verbal warning to them. Second, the fine $10. Third, no. Huh? no. It's uh, oh, look. subjective yeah. on the verbal warning. You can give a warning. But typically, the fines on grass, I think, are maybe the 10 mm -hmm. But that one might be a $50 initial fine, and then it goes up to 100 and then maybe. Well, do we need to raise those? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think we just need to enforce them. Well, I think we ought to raise them too, and that's going to get the word out quicker than anybody you hit somebody's pocketbook. There's some <clears throat> if they paid them on Kirk Street. There, much like playing like on. one of them trailers. They've got some piece of metal being out there in the front yard. They put their garbage there, twenty four seven. You know, and there's. We stopped picking up the trash. And, and there's because. three or four of them down through there like that. I mean, it goes out, stays out in the front yard 24-7. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, look at my, my mother's house. The carport, but it's in a garbage can, you know. Right. Well, my mother's house looks like a garbage heap. Breaks my heart every time I drive by there. They've torn that that uh, lattice work off, and it's yeah. all... Scrunched up there. Don't drive by there then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to to get in and out of town. You don't expect me to drive all the way down to Main Street. <laughs> That's why they built them. Well, we don't <laughs> know we need a number of that. Since we're talking about this, we got the number of these, uh, what do you call them? <laughs> the live in. Trailers and, and sheds. Oh, the RV the RV. We're trying to address that right now through planning and zoning because a lot of that falls into their purview. Uh -huh. We actually have another meeting coming up um, on that the new comp plan, and then we're hoping to also address the ordinances. It's just unfortunately a process. Yeah, yeah. What's happening with the old Fred building? <laughs> uh, it's in the hands of uh, OCDA right now. Trying, they're trying to promote it as a uh, a viable retail or like commercial building. Um, they did call this week, wanted to know the outstanding balance that they wanted to pay. You know how because they're kind of protected because of bankruptcy, and uh, I don't know if we'll get the check or not. But they did call and want to know what the balance was this week. So it makes us feel Georgia like Ashby's trying to promote yeah, it. That and they also the, asked uh, because they're wanting to close CBD the account. Plant. It makes it sound like something might be moving. It didn't go. And I'd heard a church had, was buying it. I don't think there's any contracts on the building right now. We need something to pay taxes and not the pay tax. Yeah. Lots of it. Yeah. 
see about grocery store. <laughs> Another one. But it's being pursued, though, you yeah. know, as far as finding a use for finding a lot of stuff for it. And I know it's out here across from Wayland, where uh, Oakwood Drive, there's a sign there that corners for sale there. Both sides of it. Both sides is. Yeah. <clears throat> Is anybody kind of, interested in that? Uh, there is a plan, I think, in place uh, to try to lure certain property, uh, certain businesses in there. Uh, as soon as the price becomes manageable, then I think you'll see some people purchasing it. Fair enough. That's fair enough. And the back farm on that, where you see over there on Oakwood Drive, yeah. that farm is for sale too. And you know, so there's, that would be a good there's also, farm. You know, there's something going on because yeah. they also call. Yeah, you need to There's only about 56 acres over there. I've been trying to get them out of there. <laughs> and there's just about 50 acres over 50, there across yeah. 69, well, that's what I she thought. She wants too much. <laughs> right. I know. She's trying to get, uh, can, uh, what do you call it? Because it's in the city limits, you're trying to get the, it's farmland, but they're trying to get the city <laughs> price for it, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. City building a lot of prices. Yeah, for it. yeah. <laughs> Anything informational anymore? Entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion with adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Second. Is this the last Tony. meeting of the Tony. year? Yes, it is. Do we need a moment of silence? <laughs> <laughs> you made it. Y'all made it. <laughs>